We're going to run through a sample of each type of problem that you're going to see on your test. Your test is tomorrow. Um, so just remember, it goes back a while. We've been working on this for a little while. You're going to have problems where you're working with the power rules, as well as problems where you're going to be adding, subtracting, or multiplying polynomials. So those are the types of problems that you're going to see. I'm going to run through the odds with you on this video, and then your job is going to be to complete the evens. So for number one, keep in mind when you're doing problems like this, that the numbers, the big numbers, the large numbers, those go together like normal. That's 4 times 3. And then I match the variables together as well, y to the 10th, y to the 2nd. And then the x doesn't have anybody to hang out with, so that's just going to go on the end. If I don't see a power, I assume it's a 1. But because this has nothing else to be combined with, I'm not going to um, even write it down. So I do my multiplication here. 4 times 3 is 12. This means I have 10 y's being multiplied and 2 more y's being multiplied. So altogether, I have 12 y's being multiplied. Essentially, all I do is add those powers times x. That would be my final answer on that problem. For a problem like number 3, that one has a power on the outside of a parenthesis. So technically what this means is 3u to the 7th v to the 6th times 3u to the 7th v to the 6th times 3u to the 7th v to the 6th times 3u to the 7th v to the 6th. It's multiplied out four times, and so I would have to do, if I'm following this rule, I would have to do 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, or 3 to the 4th, and then u to the 7th times u to the 7th times u to the 7th times u to the 7th. Well, there's 4 u to the 7th, which gives me u to the 28th. 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7. And then the v to the 6th um, times v to the 6th times v to the 6th times v to the 6th. There's 4 v to the 6th, or v to the 24th. The only thing I have to do yet on this problem is figure out what 3 to the 4th is. So if you have a calculator, you can use your caret key. 3 raised to the 4th power, or you can do 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Regardless of your method, 81 u to the 28th, v to the 24th would be your final answer on that problem. Every problem I do, the problem next to it is a similar problem. And so you just work your way through each type of problem. Um, and you can look back at the previous one to help you out. Next up, we have division. And when we do division, if I can simplify the whole numbers just like a fraction, I would. So like in problem number 6, I can simplify 6 divided by 2. But if I can't, then I just leave those on the top or on the bottom. And what I always do is I just write it out. I have a top, I have a bottom. 5 goes on the top, 3 goes on the bottom. I can't simplify those. And then when I look at the letters, I look at how many u's do I have on each level? I have 6 on the top and 3 on the bottom. How many more do I have on top? I have 3 more. That means all the u's are going to be canceled off the bottom, and I have 3 additional on top once I do my simplifying. When I look at the v's, I have the same amount of v's on the top and on the bottom. And technically what I'm doing is subtracting those powers. And so it would be 8 minus 8. That would be v to the 0 power. That means I don't have any v's. And so my final answer then is 5u to the 3rd over 3. If I were to have more of a value on the bottom, more u's or more v's on the bottom, then the v or u, whichever I have more of, would stay on the bottom. I have another one like that. This is what I was talking about, about where I have more. Now here's another situation where I can simplify the 10 and the 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. And because the 10 was on top and is bigger, I'm going to end up with 5 on top. Then I look at my y's. I have one y on the top and two y's on the bottom. That means I have one extra y on the bottom. I don't have to write y to the first, but sometimes I do. 
Then I look at my x's. I have seven x's on the top, eight x's on the bottom. That means I have one extra x on the bottom as well. So my final answer then, I would probably write this as five over xy or yx, it doesn't matter. But I don't need those first powers on those. Lastly, when it comes to the power rules is how do I deal with negative powers? Well, when you have negative powers, you're still gonna kinda work through it the same way. So for instance, on this problem, I'm gonna put my twos, my big numbers, two and three together, and then I'll have my b to the third times b to the negative fourth, and this is six b, I add those powers, three plus negative four is negative one, and when I deal with a negative power, that means I'm gonna put it on the bottom of the fraction, so I end up with six over b. The next thing we worked on was adding and subtracting polynomials. Remember when you add, all you have to do is just drop the parentheses. I can just rewrite this as 3v minus 6v to the fourth minus 3v cubed plus 6v to the fourth minus 8v minus four, and I just combine the like terms. Well, I'm gonna do that, Six those cancel each other out. I have a 3v and a minus 8v, that's negative 5v. Then I have a negative 3v cubed with nothing to combine with. And then lastly, I have a minus 4, so I'll put the minus 4 at the end. Typically, we like to write this in descending order of variables, so I'm going to move the 3, negative 3v to the third first, minus 5v, minus 4. Final answer on that one just combining like terms. The rules are slightly different when we have a minus. Keep in mind that the minus changes all the signs in the second parentheses. So this is 6n to the fourth plus 5n squared plus 4n cubed. Notice I did not change anything in the first one. In the second one, everything becomes the opposite of what it was. And then I'll go through and do the same thing. Combine the like terms. 13n to the fourth. n squared, do I have any more? Yep, five minus eight minus three n squared. Then I have here a four n cubed, four n cubed plus eight n cubed. Then I have to put it in descending order. And there's my final answer. The last part of your test is multiplying. And so keep in mind when you multiply, we talked about two different methods. There's the distributing or FOIL method, and then there's also the box method. So the first one I'm going to do the distributing method with, and the second one I'm going to do the box method with. And you can do either one either way. But remember when I distribute, I multiply the first number by both of the things in the second set of parentheses. So 3a times 2a is 6a squared. 3a times negative 5 is negative 15a. Then I do the same thing with the second set. Minus 6 times, or negative 6 times, 2a is minus 12a. Negative 6 times negative 5 is positive 30. The middle two terms can be combined. 6a squared minus 17a plus 30. And there is my final answer on that problem. The very last problem on the review here is one where we are going to be, like I said, doing the box method. Remember when you do the box method, you make, uh, in this case, 2 by 3 box. So I have 6n and 4, 6n squared, 8n and 6. If any of those are negative, remember you make it a minus. If it's a minus, you make it a negative on that thing. Then I just multiply those together. This is 36n cubed. 6 times 8 is 48. They both had an n, so n squared. 36n. 24n squared. 4 times 8 is 32n. And 4 times 6 is 24. I said look for the diagonals that are like terms, because those are going to be combined. 
So when I'm all done, I have 36n cubed, and then I'll combine this diagonal. 24 plus 48 is plus 72n squared. And then 32 plus 36 plus 68n plus 24. Final answer on that one. Again, your job then is going to be to finish the rest of these as your review grade. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, give me a call or email me, whatever. Test tomorrow.